Then we have ch uh, void, and we need to change it to charge foreign currency. And then you want to do the same with the budget, either budget. Make sure it's the same as up there. And then make sure this last one is foreign currency. So if they match, then it's all good to go. Earlier today, when I was kind of briefing over the program, so I'd know uh, exactly what to do when I filmed the video here, uh, I was doing everything right, and I was like, I've done this program before. It's not that hard. Why am I getting all these errors? And it was because I wasn't changing it up here in the function prototype. But yeah, most of the time, the mistakes that annoy you the most are just little... Uh, very simple to solve uh, problems like you forgot a semicolon in it screws up part of the program but whatever um, okay now you're gonna change this to either budget so it'll be uh, universal for whatever country's budget you're using and uh, then you want to use the deference operator here and you want to change this from euro transaction to exchange transaction and then equals foreign currency times either budget dot not dot dash greater than exchange rate and then you want to do this one with either budget as well and then the budget minus equals either budget and I'm actually going to show you a way that you can use the old asterisk deference operator. You just enclose it with uh, parentheses like so, and then you can still use that dot. So if you like the dot syntax, which I actually like this way almost better, but sometimes, or most of the time, it just seems easier to me if I just simply do that. But yeah, um, ooh, forgot this one as well. Well, actually. I'll just do this whole line with this way of the deference operator. It doesn't really matter. It's just whatever preference. Um, and then change this to exchange exchange transaction. Okay, I really hope I didn't get any bugs or errors, but Oh well, let's build and run and see what we got. Wow, I'm very glad that I typed everything correctly. Very excited. Well, uh, there is the program uh, converting $100 from a budget of 1,000 into euros leaves 900, and then charging 100 euros leaves 775 because, of course, the uh, exchange rate is 1.25 and then down below you have converting a hundred dollars from budget of 2000 leaves 1900 charging a hundred dollars leaves 10750 because it was one or yeah 1.5 but um i'm gonna quickly go over kind of the whole thing of the program so the first thing is this structure up here which declares all these different members and then the struct variables that you can have for uh, different countries and everything. So that's pretty straightforward there. Then the function prototypes, you that's real straightforward as well. Then this next part and main is where you declare all the values for whichever budget, whether it's England, Europe, or Brazil, whatever. 
Then this next part, these next four lines of code is where really all the action happens. I'm just going to go over England because Europe is the exact same uh, mechanics of the way it works. So the first thing is you use the, you take the address of this budget that you declared up here and you send it down here because it's uh, spend dollar so then you send the control down here and it can use either budget and so this is a budget variable like he because this is a type def up here so it's an argument for a budget variable and this is a budget variable so it says inside whichever budget variable whether it's uh, vacation budget England or vacation budget Europe take the budget and then minus subtract dollars and dollars is an argument for the number of dollars in Europe or England which is up here declared so that's 100 so it subtracts 100 from the budget then it uh, displays this um, outputs it into the debugger then you go to charge foreign currency and you do the same thing where you get the address of the budget with the and sign and the same exact thing happens here so you can use either one uh, whichever one is sending information to these universal functions at the time it takes the exchange uh, exchange transaction and nothing has been assigned to it so it assigns the foreign currency which is just uh, argument for the foreign currency whether it's pounds or euros and then multiplies that times the exchange rate and the exchange rate is inside the uh, vacation budget up here so it goes inside and multiplies it by that exchange rate and then uh, the next line it subtracts the exchange rate that you just assigned a value to from the budget so the exact same thing that we did before except you just now have these universal functions and uh, so you can pass more you don't have to create a new function every time you want to pass uh, something more to it so you can pass different budgets into the same function and it's very simple to extend from here you simply just uh, create a new budget and then you can name it let's say vacation budget Brazil um, after that declaration you just have to assign the values and then you have four lines of code and you have a whole new uh, budget so it's a lot meaner leaner greener not greener I'll stop with the corny catchphrases but it is much easier to extend and yeah really great program now so uh, this is actually our last lesson of the basic procedural programming the next lesson will be object oriented programming we'll be beginning that and I know I've been talking about it ever since I started these lessons practically but next lesson it will be here so we'll be talking about objects and classes you know the stuff that you'll be using to build your real world iphone and mac app so i'm real excited about it i hope you are as well so please subscribe so you don't miss a single one of my videos um please like this video and comment and check out any lessons that you may have missed so you're all caught up when we get into object oriented programming and uh, check out some of my other videos and really just thanks for watching it means so much to me that uh all you guys watch all my lessons and uh please subscribe like i already said and thanks for watching again it means a lot see you in the next lesson